G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel to today's video where I'm going to feature another new brand. So this is courtesy of Pantor Watches. Uh, this is a micro brand from Hong Kong established in 2017 as far as I can tell and they do seem to be doing dive style watches or at least everything they've done so far. This is their third design and they do seem to be going for original design so that is something I can really appreciate that they are doing. So without further ado, let's get into this particular packaging, which is uh, something I really uh, like as well. Uh, I was expecting a traditional box, but they have sent it in a customized carry case. This is a travel carry case, a two watch carry case. You may have seen this, you know, selling online. They come in uh, two, four and eight watch designs that I have seen. Uh, I was going to pick one up, but I don't need to now because they have sent me something that can carry two watches. So you can see there, you know, leather uh, or faux leather flap that protects the watches from hitting each other. Uh, and let's just show you, you know, very basic instructions there. You know, it's a three-hander with dates, so, uh, you know, nobody who uses watches really needs instructions for that. I think I've, I've never really read instructions uh, for one of those. So there you go, Pantor. Uh, warranty card okay and let's just get this out so uh, immediately you can see I've removed quite a number of links from this very large watch so let's just put the packaging aside now and show you the watch itself uh, get it opened up there so guys this is the Pantor seal 500 meter automatic dive watch uh, the MSRP for this is 539 USD. Uh, I haven't quite seen this go on discount yet, but uh, I, I'm sure that at some times they, they probably will provide discount codes. So keep a lookout for that and I will put down codes if I find any. Uh, and then that's exactly the same price that it lists for in Amazon as well. Uh, so let's just flip the watch around and let you take a look at this, you know, intensely solid construction here. So the movement in here uh, is also a first for the channel. It is a Swiss movement. It is the Claro CL888, not something that I have ever had my hands on. It is a 21600 beat per hour movement, interestingly, the first Swiss movement I have seen, uh, as far as I recall, that beats at 21600. Everything else that I've had in hand is a 28800. Uh, it's 18 joules and it's a 38 hour reserve movement in here. Uh, so it does have the quick set date. Uh, it does hack and it does have a manual wind, much like, uh, I guess, the ETA 2824. Um, you can see the date implemented on that window actually at the 430 position. Um, it's no border on that window. It's a, a white dial with black lettering that you can see there. Okay. So moving on to the case, the case itself is probably the main talking point here. 44 millimeters uh, in terms of the width here. 316 l very solid piece of 316L steel. Uh, the, the thickness is approaching 18 millimeters. It's about 17.5 uh, millimeters thick with my calipers. Uh, the lug width uh, is 24. And I think actually this is appropriate for this watch, you know, 24 millimeter lug width. Uh, lug to lug distance is 53. So that distance there between my thumbs is 53 millimeters. So that is relatively high. Weight wise, this is definitely the heaviest watch I have ever felt. Heaviest watch I've featured on the channel. 265 grams with those links removed. With the links in, if you have a large wrist and use all the links, uh, it is approaching nearly 300 grams. And so the finishing is fully brushed, right? As I pan the watch around, you can see that. Uh, the top surfaces that you can see here, there's a radial brushing. And then the, the side, it, it goes on to a horizontal brush pattern uh, for the side of the case there. Okay. So... Uh, the, the case back, uh, you know, a, a lot of the, the finishing at the back is also brushed, but the case back, you can see that there's so, also some radial uh, pattern there. Uh, and if you look at the case back, you know, you can appreciate detail that they've gone in there. So with that uh, etching detail there, that, that, you know, different design case back with the 12 notches, you know, over-engineered notches, uh, it's definitely a solid screw-in case back. Uh, and there's also a nice etching on the crown there. So that, that's also a seal 
uh, that you can see hopefully that translates onto the camera there um, right with, with that etching there and screwing crown uh, this watch is rated at 500 meters uh, for the water rating it does also feature a helium escape valve right screw in and tighten at 10 o'clock much like uh, Omega Seamaster and many uh, kind of deep dive watches would feature a helium valve right let's get into the dial here right just a, just a nice flat black simple dial it's wholly printed there's no applied markers here uh, if you look at the hands it's kind of this segmented sword style hands I suppose you might call that uh, so that that's an interesting uh, feature to note and I haven't quite seen a set of hands exactly like that the loom is BGW9 Super Luminova and of course I'll put up a loom shot for you to appreciate here how it performs in the dark and it does perform as well as you would expect it lasts through the night fairly easily when I've used this when I've charged this you know with just uh, ambient night light uh, before I sleep the, the bezel is a steel bezel you can see there's no insert here it's just solid steel uh, it's unidirectional dive style 120 click uh, it is actually a, a very tight bezel and that's something that people who've used this watch have uh, kind of criticized and, and I, I, I get where they're coming from but the company have said that look it's deliberately made to be tight it's a safety feature you don't want to be accidentally turning this if you're diving and you're seriously using this for a timer so, so I can appreciate where they're coming from now look it's not ridiculously tight right it's, it's one of the tightest bezels I've felt but right, if you can see I'm, I'm grabbing it with uh, I guess if I, if I use both hands on here I can turn it quite easily if you have a gloved hand with a lot of friction I'm, I'm sure you can turn it relatively easily right I mean you know it, it's, it's tight but it's workable for sure there's no, no doubt about that in my mind Right, the crystal. Now the crystal is another point as well. You know, it's a flat sapphire, but it is a five millimeter sapphire. And I'm sure that is actually quite possibly the th thickest piece of sapphire I've ever seen in any of the watches uh, that I've featured. That, that is a chunk of sapphire. Moving on to the bracelet, guys. Look at that. All solid, five piece per link. Engineer style bracelet. I believe this is what uh, this would be called. Completely brush finishes as well, you know, in matching uh, that case. And of course, uh, with this solid style of bracelet, uh, it's screw link. So that's something that's been uh, quite pleasing to see. You know, the, there is no kind of uh, typical end link. It kind of matches in with a, a, a piece here, which is also solid. And, and you would have to use screws. Uh, to remove it from the case if you so chose to do that right the, the clasps possibly the weakest part I, I think you know it is pressed metal that you can see there right this is pressed sheets of metal uh, it does have a push button uh, release there with the safety clasps so let's just get it on the wrist for the shot on the wrist now uh, okay so there we have it the pantor seal massive 44 millimeter watch remember the lug to lug is 53 so this is this is actually too large for me i think strictly speaking uh, because the bracelet kind of falls you know almost vertically down on my wrist you can kind of get away with it in uh, kind of more casual situations but strictly speaking this would be considered too large for me so that's a consideration uh, when looking at this particular watch but you know it is a beast isn't it on the wrist there okay so there we go so guys you know what have i appreciated uh, as strengths in this watch uh well look it's a super super solid tough diver that super thick crystal no doubt this is made uh, to be very tough uh, there's enough mass here i think to kind of seriously hurt someone if you you know almost so chose to use it as a weapon you know that more so than any other watch that i have uh, had in hand um, look, the, the bracelet I think is a great pairing with this particular case. It really matches it well in terms of character and solidity. So and I appreciate the quality that they've put into this bracelet, including the solid end links and the, the screw uh, link construction here. Now that's something that's really quite good. And I think they've gone for nice design choices. I, I mean, look at the handset, that's something different. Uh, the dial, you know, plain simple but you know straight to the point you know not uh, overt all it says at the bottom here is automatic and the depth rating that's really all it has uh, on the dial 
Um, the bezel again, right? I haven't quite seen the bezel like that. Solid steel, no insert, and you know, just a solid piece of steel with uh, these position markers here for you to turn it uh, when you need to adjust the time. Uh, and then if you look at the, the case, it's kind of like cushion-like, I suppose, but it's like no other cushion that I've seen with uh, some of the angular constructions. It is just a solid piece of 316L steel. Uh, and then, you know, nice touches on the case back as well. You know, the 12 notches, which is overly engineered. You don't need 12 notches, uh, but it does give a, a nice look to the case back, similar, I suppose, to the Armida uh, that I reviewed uh, a little while back. What are the limitations? What are the things you have to consider about this watch? Okay, so it's very heavy, right? It, it's 265 adjusted weight. You won't forget that this is on your wrist. Uh, not everybody will like such um, a, a weighty watch on your wrist. Uh, you know, I almost feel like I have to go to the gym a few times uh, to wear this. And it is also large, so 53 millimeters is not to everyone's preference and not suitable for everyone. So if you have a small wrist, uh, mine is 17 centimeters. If you have a smaller wrist, you probably want to think uh, a few times before considering a watch anywhere near this size. All right, and then I've mentioned this already. The class is relatively weak. It's a bit incongruent with the rest of the watch, which is, which is super solid. This one, uh, you know, this, uh, I think the weakest part It's almost as if uh, there's some cost that ran out to, you know, budget for the class itself. Uh, lastly, I'll say, if you look at the, the dial itself, the seconds hand, uh, I'm not sure if you can see, it's down here at the six o'clock mark now. It, it's very difficult to see. Uh, it's it's kind of this dark gray, which, uh, you know, is not very visible against the black dial. So that's something that is of note. If you really need to look at the seconds hand, uh, this will make it a little bit difficult for you. I think the seconds hand could seriously do with a loom pit that was just lifted up uh, you know, definitely above uh, the level it is now. So guys, there we have it. The Pantor Seal 500 meter automatic diver, the most massive watch I've ever featured on the channel. Let me know what you think uh, of this particular piece, uh, this, this behemoth of a piece. If you have any experience with other pieces from Pantor, I'd like to hear uh, your thoughts, uh, you know, how you found them as a brand. Um, guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I'm putting out new content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for watching and as always, I'll catch you next time.